What's going on YouTube? It's Brendan from Market Makers, your home for Wyckoff and Advanced Fibonacci Pattern TA. You may have noticed the thumbnail, Super Bubble. We're going to talk about the anatomy of the current marketplace that we trade in and why this is a Super Bubble versus the previous bubbles. So you guys know there's a lot of YouTubers out there, some very intelligent, very wealthy people that I respect a lot, like Jeremy Grantham, Grant Williams, and they track these things. They study bubbles, but it's always done from that macro analyst standpoint, a fundamental analysis, if you will. I want to focus on Wyckoff price method and advanced Fibonacci techniques, give you a technical trader perspective of a super bubble. So let's talk about bubbles. In 99, I started trading. I was there for the dot-com bubble. In 2008, I was working at an investment bank. I saw the market crash firsthand. So we need to look at the anatomy of a bubble. In 2000, that was more of a specialized bubble. In 2000, March of 2000, you had a peak in the market. Between March and September, the high growth stocks got drug out into the street and executed. Then over the next two years, you saw the NASDAQ decline 82%. And you saw the SPX get cut in half by 50%. Those two numbers, 50% and 82%, you've seen repeated over and over again on YouTube because prior till now, that was the peak of speculation in the market. In 2008, we had that market actually peaked in July of 2006, but it wasn't until March, again, March of 2008, Bear Stearns, the first investment bank, went bankrupt. And then you had a decline in the market and a housing bubble crash, okay? So that was a two-prong bubble. What's unique about the current market structure that we are in is we are in a multi-bubble, multi-asset class trading structure right now. We have the equities bubble, stocks, okay? We have the bond bubble. Bonds are at the highest overvaluation they've ever been at. We have the housing bubble once again. The, how, the median household income multiple has just now surpassed where it was previously in 2006 at the peak. And we have something that didn't exist before, the crypto class. We have a crypto bubble as well. So we have a four-prong bubble now versus a two-prong from 2008 versus a specialized bubble in 2000. So this is potentially a catastrophic event, and it's also potentially a way to make a pile of money. This is a once-in-a-lifetime event. It's a once-in-a-lifetime event for me, and I'm 43. So what we want to do is look at the market structure, understand what's happening, happening, talk about what the Fed's doing. There's a lot of moving parts to bubbles. People say you cannot predict bubbles. It's not true at all. If you guys want a good inside scoop of the 2008 market crash, watch that movie, The Big Short. Plenty of people predicted these bubbles and plenty of people capitalized and made a lot of money off these bubbles. Where are we at now? Where we're at now, and the reason I'm making this video is, in the prior bubbles, like I said, the high growth stocks got hit first, like in the dot-com bubble, okay? So companies like Pets.com, companies that made no money, were drug out in the street and executed. We already had that happen. Everything's sped up now. You had your Pelotons already lose their 85%, right? You've had the bigger companies are now getting affected. Companies like PayPal, Starbucks. Look what happened with Facebook last week, the largest dump in price. Price, $232 billion in U.S. history, largest value dump, okay, in U.S. history. So there's this is all much faster right now, and a lot of that is because these prior bubbles didn't have all the Fed programs that have been going on now since 2008. They didn't have the TARP. They didn't have the quantitative easing. We have been pumping liquidity into these marketplaces. Prior to COVID, the Fed had $3 trillion in debt on its balance sheet and now has over $9 trillion. 40% of every dollar in circulation right now was printed since COVID. This is why we have rampant inflation. Of course, the Fed number for inflation is roughly 7%. But if you take the same CPI metrics and apply it, the CPI metrics they use from the early 1980s, that is, and apply it to today, real inflation is actually over 15%. What does this mean as far as protecting us from a bubble. Well, it does. what it means is the Fed is handcuffed because once the markets do start to crash and once they start to decline, they have a very tough decision to make. Do they print more money, possibly putting us into hyperinflation, or do they let these markets decline and crash? What the Fed wants to do is a soft landing, 
just do these minuscule rate raises, let the market react, and they want a slow bleed. That would be the ideal situation is that the markets decline over a period of a couple of years, but markets are highly irrational. Like I said, there's a lot of moving parts here because there's people that say the Fed won't be able to raise rates come March. They'll see what's happening in the markets, and they'll go back to that transitory language of, well, we really think a lot of this is supply chain, so we're not going to raise rates. In reality, a quarter point rate raise won't do anything. But what it is, is a psychological effect in the market, and that could be when you see the beginning of a sell-off. Now, like I said, it was in March of 2000 that was the peak of the dot-com bubble. March is a key date, and it was in March of 2008 where Bear Stearns went bankrupt in the GAN market cycle. March 21st is a 90-degree angle on the GAN calendar. So this is a potential strong pivot point, which is why you see key events happen in bubble crashes all throughout the game calendar. So March 21st is that date. March is quickly approaching in what? In a couple of weeks, it'll be March. We need to pay attention to what happens. And it just so happens the Fed meetings in March. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. It's amazing, right? So what I want to do is focus on the support and resistance structures of these markets, utilizing Wyckoff, utilizing Fibonacci. And let's go ahead and analyze this together. And guys, if you like this type of video series, definitely smash the like button for me. Subscribe to the channel. Send this out to your friends and family. I'd like to get some circulation. I will make this a regular series. Post in the comments what you like about it, what you don't like about it. As you all know, I try to reply to everything and what you would like to see more of in this video series. I have a separate video series for crypto, so be sure to check that out as well. Our Discord link to our room where we trade all these markets as well as our Twitter, everything is in the video description. Let's jump into the chart. Looking at the Russell 2K first. Why are we looking at the Russell? The small caps lead the large caps. Russell 2K is stocks number 1,001 to 3,000. Okay, these are big companies. These are not these are not just small tiny companies. These are billion dollar companies. And what's unique about the Russell last year, the net, the uh, SPX basically returned almost 30 percent. The Russell returned nothing. The Russell has been in Wyckoff distribution since February of 2021. Sideways markets. Quick review of Wyckoff. I'll go into more in depth in Wyckoff and other videos. Basic concept of Wyckoff. The market can only move three different directions. It can move sideways, it can move up, it can move down. If the market is moving sideways, like what's on my screen, you are either in accumulation, which is buying, or you are in distribution, which is selling. And then obviously if the market's moving up, like it did here, sign of strength, that is a markup. If the market's moving down, that is a markdown. Okay, so that's the phase of Wyckoff. Now we had a strong markup leading to our sideways market movement, which is distribution. I'm gonna walk you through Wyckoff on Russell, and then we'll just do it briefly on the other two marketplaces because the same steps repeat, but I want you to understand the concept. You have a sign of strength markup, market goes sideways, and and you have a buying climax candle, an automatic reaction. This establishes your trading range, denoted here by these two red lines. Within the Wyckoff cycle, there's phases, but the big steps I want to focus on here is you have a lot of price volatility. You get up thrust. When you get up thrust, typically followed by a strong sign of weakness, you get down thrust, you can have signs of strength. And the Russell did this for over a year, back and forth, back and forth. Big up thrust here big sign of weakness, and finally coming to the end, last test of supply. This is where they throw the hammer down on retail. And of course, you have the buy the dip mafia, point uh, preliminary test of support, confluent with these two sets of candles over here, and then the market falls down. The Russell fell from the distribution box, and it is now accumulating at a lower level in a sideways market down here, starting the new steps for the Wyckoff. Now, Accumulation boxes can be flipped to distribution boxes and visa versa. So let's look at this right now and see where we're at utilizing Fibonacci, guys. Let's go ahead and check Fibonacci and see what our support and resistance structures are here. And then let's look at some projections of what could happen if we don't hold key support or defeat key resistance. Pulling down a Fib retracement here, you can see we hit the 382 right? Knife through it, got rejected once, twice, three times, the 3D2 at 2046. Let's go ahead and take this off. And I want to look at a wave projection, right? Then we're going to look at for Fibonacci patterns as well. If this starts to fall apart, 
what is our wave projection down? What kind of percentage are we going to lose if we do project a wave down? So let's go ahead and take our trend based fib extension and get our A wave, B, and this is our C wave projection, okay? The 618, the most commonly retraced two fib, has you at 1815. You can see we already hit the 382 at 1909, right? So we already punched through the 382. And the 618 is at 1815, the 1618, the golden ratio phi. Look at where this is, 1418. 1418 and we are at 1995. So this would be the first move down and it is not a coincidence. It is over in this candle cluster. In other words, what do I mean by that? You would be giving up this whole sign of strength. You see this? This whole markup, you'd be giving this up in a wave projection down if you start losing your key support structure. And that is 1418 is the golden ratio target. A couple of things here. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit on this and analyze this a little bit more. And we'll do this in the other two marketplaces as well. It is not a coincidence where price fell right here. Do you see where it fell? If you look at this over here, you got to mark this off for you. Look at this range you fell to. You passed, you surpassed this candle cluster. You just fell right through this support structure. You see, that's how weak the Russell is. It came down to the top of this markup area where price started to go sideways again. And right now it's utilizing this as its support structure. And going through the Wyckoff steps right now, it's already completed. This is on the daily time frame, by the way. It's already completed two of the steps. Okay, so you have your selling climax candle, denote it here, volume spread analysis. Look at that shadow, right? Strong demand wick, so it gets bought back up. Automatic reaction forms your ceiling. Then you have a sign of weakness. You get a down thrust and then propelled to a sign of strength for an up thrust. And this is where you are. You are floating in the middle right now. You're floating in the middle. And of course, utilizing fibs, guys, you can always look at your support resistance structures. And you can see you're between the 0.5 and the 382. So this is a pivotal pivotal moment for the Russell. Lots of moving parts for the Russell. And this is af obviously after hours. The market has an open, or it's pre-market, I should say. The market has an open. It is Sunday night. But there's a lot of expectations for this week. This is a very important trading week coming up. Let's look at some advanced Fibonacci patterns to see if we have anything here. We'll go from our all-time high. Let's swing low down here. Swing high. Down the swing low. And we have a white swan here. This is a bearish pattern. So this could activate as early as a 238 right about here at 2191 all the way up to the 886, which again would be just about here. 24, 22, which would almost take you back up to your all-time high. Again, part of my melt-up theory that we were talking about last video being on the clock, all these markets are on the clock, this does have the ability to rebound like a rubber band, right? It's been pulled down, it can snap back, just like we predicted with the other markets previously. You could rebound and come test some new levels, which is why I will be tracking it and posting trades for this in the room when the time comes. One more thing I wanna look at while we're here, guys. Let's go ahead and check out our moving averages, the two most important ones here on the daily, the 55 and the 233. Uh-oh, you guys that watch my video series know what this is, a death cross, okay? This is a death cross of the 55 crossing the 233. Again, this is a measurement of price over time. This is a extremely bearish signal when you have death crosses. Oftentimes, it is a precursor to a bear market. The Russell 2K, the small caps lead the large caps, and you have a death cross. Something to pay very close attention to. Now that we know that, you can look at other trend indicators such as my our no moving average and see that you are indeed totally red. You had your last green spike, you are totally red. So again, because it's the markets, because it's irrational, because the Fed meetings next month, we could definitely see a rebound up, but just as likely see us fall apart. And the reason you do technical analysis is because you need to understand your support and resistance structures so you know which direction to trade. And right now, with a death cross, this looks morbid for the Russell 2000. Let's look at the NASDAQ 100, NDX. Again, similar structure here. You can already see this over here. This is our backup before our sign of strength, our markup. You see that, that sign of strength up? But if you just throw some trend lines down here, 
not a coincidence exactly where we fell. We got oversold, bounced back up into this trading range, okay? So this is a trading range we're in. And again, we started new steps for Wyckoff, a selling climax. Can it look at that demand wick? Classic. And then we have an automatic reaction to give us a ceiling. And then price is fluctuating back and forth in this trading range. So we're going to pull some fibs here as well. Let's get a fib retracement. Beginning of that wave. Pull it down here. And we retrace to the 618, the most commonly retraced to FIB. Price got rejected and now is tumbling down. So like I said, this week's going to be really interesting to see what the market wants to do. If it wants to go bullish or if it's going to continue bearish and uh, potentially make some different structures and shapes like double tops in these different marketplaces, Fibonacci patterns. Really, really fun time to be trading. Let's go ahead and remove that. And let's look at a FIB projection as well for a wave projection. Come back up. And as you can see, we once again hit the 618 for support. You're basically bouncing between the two 618 structures here. And then if you look at your wave projection down, the 1618 would take you to, what is that? The 1618 would take you to 11,546. And something we can measure once again here, that would be another 21% move down. 21% move down if you lose the key support structure. Your key support structure in this case being your 618 at 13849. Again, whenever you lose the 618, you have a bias. It is not a guarantee, but you have a bias to come down and test your 1FIB. You lose the 1FIB as support, you have a bias to come down and test your 1618. This is why it's important to watch things, use indicators, use your moving averages, understand Wyckoff price method, very, very pivotal to trading the markets. So this as well does not look too good. We had a rejection at the 618. We got to see if we can gather strength here for a move up. But let's look at our moving averages. Let's see how far off are we if we are close or far away from a death cross. As you can see, like I said, the Russell leads. NASDAQ's not far behind. You see the curvature? So when price is below the moving averages, they bend down towards the price, okay? So this needs to come back up above the 233 and start getting separation here on the daily time frame. This, there's no way to tell you how long this would take. It depends on price's decline or price's rise. And these moving averages descend to price. So something interesting to watch. Again, this week is pivotal for the markets. Very, very pivotal. Let's check out the SPX. The SPX looks the healthiest of all these major marketplaces. Let's do the exact same steps here. Here's our backup region before our sign of strength. You see that? Let's go ahead and mark this off. Look at your trading range. Ex identical, just like the NDX, right? Just like the Russell. So we have this trading range area. We fell from our distribution box. We had our up thrust, sign of weakness, last test of supply, preliminary test of support, fell down, got oversold. Look at that wick. Look at the shadow on that on that buying or that selling climax candle. Look at the reclamation there of the candle. So we got that. We have our automatic reaction and it instantly moved back up. So let's look at our fibs and see what we hit and see our wave projections as well. Pull that from up here, beginning our wave. Once again, we got through the 618. Here we got up above it, couldn't hold, and then fell back down below it. We're resting on the 0.5 FIB. Let's go ahead and get a wave projection. Trend based FIB. Use the same points. So A wave, B wave, and this is our C wave projection. Price is currently at 4,500 roughly. And then we would be going down to 3,739 if we start losing key support. And just like the NDX, when I say key support, what do I mean? Look at your 618. Look where your 618 is. You hit it, you went through it, you used it already as key support structure. You lose the 618, bias to come to the 1 fib, lose the 1 fib, bias to come to the 1618. Let me pull, I'm going to zoom out here and look at this candle structure over here and see exactly what this is pointing at. So we'd be coming back down to this region right here. Again, giving up this whole markup move, okay? Let's look at that price decline would actually be here. Do a measured move here of a ruler. You would be talking about a possible price declination if you lose key support of another 17%. So as you can see, 
the SPX is definitely the healthiest of the bunch because this price move, even though you did get rejected, you did attempt to climb back into this distribution box. Remember, as you accumulate, you can move up with signs of strength. You have to have market momentum. There's a lot going against these markets. I do believe these markets can recover short term. Long term, mid term, I believe that super bubble is coming. I believe these markets will all pop. But short term, I believe there is a possibility for more upside. We have to see what happens in these marketplaces. Let's go ahead and throw on the moving averages and then uh, we'll wrap this video up until the next video series. And let's throw on the 233 and the 55. Yep, we have some room here. We're between the 233 and the 55. So again, you know, we just have to watch this. We want to stay away from a death cross. And if price does come back up above the 55, then we could have some more upside. We're not that far away from the all-time high. You know, you got to remember that. This is what, 6.5%? You're not that far away from the all-time high. So 6.5%, 7%. You have the ability to make some moves here, which is crazy. We're talking about a super bubble, but at the same time talking about the possibilities of new all-time highs in some of these markets, including the possibility for crypto as well. You need more bullish momentum, but we'll see what happens, guys. Stay tuned to this channel. Give me your comments and feedbacks in the comment section on the video, and I'll be sure to read them. And uh, guys, have a fantastic evening. It is late here. I'm putting this video out there. You can watch it when you get up with a cup of coffee. Happy trading, everybody.